this campaign too. I see some faces I recognize. There's Brian Cranston. Hey, Brian. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. From Jennifer Lopez to Meryl Streep, celebrities endorse Kamala Harris at Opera Town Hall. Damn. Look, look. There is no denying that on the other side, on the left, as they say it, they have got joy. They are bringing uh, hope to people. This town hall by Oprah Winfrey is going to run people crazy. The right have got a few celebrities that have endorsed Trump, but all of them are washed up celebrities. The left have got all the top and current celebrities endorsing Kamala Harris. Whether you like it or not, this scared the shit out of the right. This town hall has got some big, big, big faces. They can pretend that it doesn't mean anything. But boy, oh boy. If it doesn't mean anything, why was Trump? Why was Trump posting AI generated support from Taylor Swift to Trump? If it did not mean anything. Why was he accepting a fake Taylor Swift endorsement if it did not mean anything? Why were they hoping that Taylor Swift was maybe going to change her mind and endorse Trump if it doesn't mean anything? Taylor Swift endorsed Biden last time. How could they be hoping that Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift was going to endorse Trump? When you see the Fox News panel, the whatever they call themselves, the five, those guys, really, those guys are out to make money for themselves. And they know Trump is a fool. You know, a fool is always somebody you can lie to. A fool is somebody you can just tell him that you are good. You are so good. You are so good. Even when you know they are shit. Take an example of a debate. We all saw the debate. We all saw how Trump was rattled. We all saw how Trump was dog walk. We all saw how this woman was just keep, he, she keep poking at Trump and Trump kept falling in the trap. My favorite podcast, PBD, the first segment of that debate, there were they, their faces, their faces, they were all dressed in suit, hoping to celebrate. Hoping that Trump was going to come and punch, 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 punch so they could celebrate. Because they say he is a strong man. But guess what? His ass was spun. So this town hall, this town hall is going to run them. It's going to make them go crazy. This town hall is amazing. Can you just see the amount of celebrities on that screen? Can you see the amount of have you seen have you seen any any such thing from the right? Have you seen any? Trump always claimed that the, he pulls the biggest crowd. It's not about pulling the biggest crowd. Because those crowds are sometimes the same people that keep traveling with Trump. This is the this is where you know this campaign is going the right way. When you see this amount of people on a virtual, what's it called? Uh, virtual town hall. Is that what I can call it? Look at the amount of people. Thousands or hundreds. Let me say hundreds. Let me not, let me not, let me not say thousands. Hundreds of celebrities in London, everywhere on earth, just wanting to make their voice, to just wanting to endorse Kamala Harris. But are these going to turn into votes? That is the one question. Chris Rock is in the house. Chris, where are you? Chris Rock is in the house. That is Chris Rock. That is Chris Rock. Ben Stiller, Jennifer Lopez. Ben Stiller. Ross. Guys, guys, let's not fool ourselves. Yes, Trump can still win by miracle. Trump says God wants him to be president. That can happen because miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. Trump won in 
2016, even though he lost the popular vote. He lost the popular vote in 2020 and he lost the election. Now it's 2024. What is going to happen? Look at all these celebrities. Jennifer Lopez! Where are you, Jennifer? Yeah. Jennifer is there. How many thousands, how many million followers have these celebrities got? Tracy Ellis. Julia Roberts, where are you? Guys, this is this, this. So, as I said, as I said, Trump can still win, but that is going to be a miracle. With this amount of celebrities endorsing Kamala Harris with the following they've got. Miracles do happen. And Trump should be expecting for a miracle to happen. The worst thing with Trump is he's picked. He picked J.D. Vance. For me, I believe this is something that I don't know if these guys on the right have realized that J.D. Vance is the enemy from within. They claim that they are enemies from within, but J.D. Vance is the enemy from within. How on earth did Trump manage to pick somebody who said he will not vote for you? That he will vote for his dog? That is a red flag. Somebody who said even though they keep saying the left are calling Trump Hitler. Jerry Vance also said Trump was America's Hitler. He said Trump was America's Hitler. He said anybody who votes for Trump is an idiot. How can you pick somebody like, it doesn't matter if it changes, if it changes his, should I say idea? It doesn't matter if he, ha if he has changed. He has changed for a reason. He changed because he wanted that seat at the Senate. He changed because his boss told him, you have to change. That is the only reason. But deep inside his heart, J.D. Vance doesn't like Trump. You can see from the campaign, the man is messing up Trump's campaign. He hasn't brought anything of substance to Trump's campaign. He keeps just messing everything up. He is the one who came about as he admitted himself. He is the one who created the Haitians are eating the dogs, the cat, and the pet of Americans. J.D. Vance said he is the one. And he doesn't care if it's false. He's going to keep pushing it. Do you expect that those in the middle are going to listen to somebody says, saying that he lied about immigrants eating dogs, cats, and pets just to create attention? Do you think people will vote for somebody like that? Somebody who says, I lied, I created this story. Not even that he created this story. About people from a different state. He created this story about people from his own constituent. His own place. That, as I said, is an enemy from within. As we say in French, l'ennemi dans la maison. That is the enemy. That is the person destroying Trump's campaign. And because Trump also cannot filter information and use the one that is right and wrong, Trump just uses anything that comes his way. Because with Trump, he believes if he says something every day, you just have to stick to it and make it true. Say a lie until it becomes the truth. J.D. Vance is the one who is destroying Trump's campaign. Trump, Trump could, he can still win. He can still win. Because in America, anything is possible. That's why, that's why they always say the American dream. You can go to America as broke as hell and become a billionaire. The America, so anything is possible. The landscape can change at any time. But we are still waiting for that. How many days have you got now? 44? 
44 days to go and Jesse Vance keep messing up Trump's campaign. The next time he's going to have everything is going to go to the drain is that day he's going to go on debate with Tim Walsh. It's going to be worse because Tim Walsh is just going to go straight on him. And Jerry Vance, we thought Trump did self-destruct. Jerry Vance is coming. So, this from Oprah Winfrey is, is going to make them go crazy. All these celebrities, what they're going to say is, ah, it doesn't mean anything. How can you say it doesn't mean anything? People do follow celebrities. People do whatever celebrities ask them to do. If a celebrity put on this, this vest, people are going to buy the vest. So what makes you guys think that when they say go and vote, I'm voting for Kamala, they're not going to follow and vote. They're going to follow. People do what celebrities do. People follow them foot, foot, step by step. So I don't know if um, the right can change strategy. Call J.D. Vance, put him down and tell him, stop all this bullshit. Stop creating these fake stories because you're only hurting the campaign. You're only messing your boss's chances to get back that White House. Because he desperately, desperately need the White House. If he doesn't get the White House, the rest of his years on this earth is not going to be good. So J.D. Vance, sort this shit out. Keep watching this. Enjoy celebrities endorsing Kamala Harris. If you can, if you cannot, just move on to the next thing. And this narrow streep is in the house. <laughs> so glad to have all of you familiar faces and those of you who are not yet familiar to all of us. Okay, Brian, so happy to have you here tonight. Brian Cranston, what do you want to say? Why did you want to join us here tonight? I'm just smiling from ear to ear, Oprah. I have never felt this much joy and optimism in a campaign in a long time. So I, I'm just uh, so appreciative of Kamala to be able to bring back that sense of optimism and and to squash the cynicism and the and the and the vitriol and the rancor that that just seems to be floating all around Washington. And I hope that at that. We're going to ride this wave into Washington. I'm here. I'm here to support. I can't be happier than this uh, candidate. Uh, I, I think she's going to be a terrific president. Thank you, Brian Johnson. So, thanks, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from London, uh, Chris Rock. So it's the middle of the night there. You're the one who told me. Remember, Chris and I ran into each other <laughs> this summer, and Chris, no matter where you meet him, he's funny, he's gold. <laughs> he goes, there's going to be weeping in the streets. <laughs> Are we ready for the weeping in the streets? <laughs> when Kamala Harris becomes president of the United States <laughs> of America. <laughs> weeping in the streets. What do you want to say, sir? I've always been a, a fan of Kamala, even back when she was uh, running for, I, I remember writing her a check when she was like the district attorney for something. Maybe it was to get out of a parking ticket or something. But I've, I've been writing her checks for a long time. And I just want to, I want to bring my daughters to the White House to meet this black woman president. Uh, <laughs> That's a reason. That's a reason. I think she would make a great president. Yeah. And I just, I, I'm ready to black. turn the page, man. Yeah. All the, the hate, the negativity, it, it's got to stop. Yeah, we're so sick of the negativity. Thank you so much, Chris, for being up this early in the morning in London. Thank you. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller, I heard you were on the comics for Kamala, and, that, and so I want to know, were all the comics for Kamala trying to outdo each other with jokes for Kamala when you were on for comics for Kamala? They were, and I, I didn't outdo anyone. I was probably the <laughs> least fun of all the comics. Um, but it was, it was really, I mean, it was great, though, because everybody was so energized. And I mean, I got to go to the, the convention and, and, see, uh, and see her speech, which was just incredible. And, feeling that energy uh, 
you know, feeling kind of going from um, uh, a stop Trump mode into a go Kamala mode, the people starting to, you know, yeah. really hear what she's yeah. about. And, um, you know, I have a, I have a 22 year old daughter, 19 year old son is going to be voting in his first election. My daughter's, you know, her reproductive rights are incredibly important. Um, you know, uh, standing up for. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. And I think. Standing up for. Yeah. 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 I think. I think what Chris said. We're ready to turn the page. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Ben Siller. I see somebody else on the screen. Julia Roberts. <laughs> Hi, Julia. <laughs> I heard you were so excited you wanted to be here tonight. Why? Well, first of all, Oprah, thank you for hosting this because I guess if I started a voting club, it would be conversationalists yes. for Kamala. <laughs> <Yes>. Because <laughs> to, to talk, to, to, to listen, to be heard, yeah. to have this back and forth is so unique mm -hmm. um, in this campaign to beautiful, wonderful Kamala Harris, who I have had the good fortune of knowing. And I am a mother of two kids. This is their first chance to vote in an election. And I couldn't be more excited for them to have the legacy to say that their first vote they ever cast for president was for you. I have just chills saying that out loud. Are you all going to the polls together? Are you organizing a party? Are the motors we... having a poll party? What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> I wish we were all going together. In fact, you know, they are in college, so um, we will be separated um, on the great day. But. Uh, but in spirit united always for what we believe in and what we, you know, I feel like it's interesting. We talk so much about being um, Americans united for something, but this has become such a, a global representation of our country and what we stand for. And I get to travel internationally a lot mm -hmm. and I want people to say, oh, you're American? And not, oh, huh. how's it going over there? You know? Yes. That, so I want to get back to that space. Exactly. I, Thank I, you, Julia. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. And hey, there's Tracy Ellis Ross coming up there. Tracy, we should, now listen, if anybody should have a voting party, I think it should be at your house because you have great parties, girl. I just want to say hi, hello, Madam Vice President. That, that, it's just a, an honor. I actually have never met you, which is which is crazy. And hi, Oprah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, wait, what did I miss? <laughs> you go, she got, we just saw each other the other day. Okay. Oh, hi, Tracy. Hi. How you doing? I good. <laughs> yeah. This is exciting, okay. though, isn't it? Isn't it exciting? It's exciting. It's exciting because I believe in democracy. I believe in the future of our country, in reproductive freedom, bodily autonomy, women leading. I believe in decency. The idea of leading with joy and kindness has always been in my, in my DNA. And I'm here both for the seriousness of this election, but the joy with which it is being handled. It is stunning. And then I, I also really want to remind everybody, it hasn't been mentioned, but voting up and down the yeah, ballot good. is incredibly important. Um, your freedom and your daily life are, are all the way up and down that ballot. People are policies, and we need the right people in all areas, all, right. all positions. And then um, I would like to say to you two women, Thank you for what you represent, because as a 52-year-old childless woman, I want to say to the people who think that a woman's worth is measured in her baby count, I mean, shout out to all the amazing mothers, but the childless women have been mothering the world and elevating culture as aunties, godmothers, teachers, mentors, sisters, and friends, and the list goes, goes on, and you do not need to push out a baby to help push humanity forward. Amen to that. Thank you so much. Tracy Ellis Ross.
Meryl Streep, hello, you and I. Hi, Meryl Streep. You and I have talked about hi, this hi, moment. Hi. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about the momentum? Oh, man, this, um, this has been overwhelming to have the privilege to sit in and, and listen to the testimony of the people here. Um, hello, President Harris. Not oh. yet. <laughs> 47 days. 47 days, yes. <laughs> From my mouth to God's ear. And hello, Oprah. Uh, <clears throat> I think the word of the day has been preventable. Mm. Preventable. All of this, the mm. surround of hatred and, yeah. and venom and toxicity and um, encouraging some segment of Americans to hate other segment of Americans, yeah. it's just crazy. And nobody wants it. Mm -mm. We're done. That's right. We're done with it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just, I, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> I can't believe I had this opportunity. Um, I probably never will again. Um, <laughs> if I have a little Debbie Downer moment because mm -hmm. actually I think you're going to win. I'm sure you're going to win. I think, yeah. But what happens when you win? Yeah. And he doesn't accept it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know that there's going to be this long slog of shenanigans. And I'm wondering where, how we get to that moment, how we preserve certification on January 6th. Because if it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be maybe thrown back to the legislatures of the states. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been working with... Um, state government citizens uh, campaign, which is sgcamerica.com. So they're, they're great. They're doing the, the unglamorous down ballot uh, um, work of promoting those, those, uh, those candidates because we really, I'm worried about it. And I wonder, I wonder if we're ready for January 7th, mm -hmm. 8th, 9th and what happens? What happens? So we will be ready, but just taking a step back, and, and thank you, Marilyn, for your, just the gift that you give, you do our, do your talent, your creativity. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, one of the things that I have realized in the course of our campaign is that more Americans than we may realize who voted for Trump before have decided January 6th was just a bridge too far. It, when we reflect and think about what January 6th was, where the President of the United States, sitting in the Oval Office, incited a mob a violent mob to attack the United States Capitol, such that 140 law enforcement officers were injured, some were killed, to, to, to try and upend a free and fair election where the American people voted, that was a bridge too far for a lot of people. And we have sadly now seen how far he could go. And I think there is absolutely no tolerance whatsoever for the vast majority of Americans for that. And they've seen the lies. They understand, for example, almost every court case, I think every court case where he's challenged an election, he lost. I said on the debate stage, look, because he's having a very difficult time, obviously, processing the fact that 81 million people fired him. Yeah. Right? But so there is that, that it really was a bridge too far for so many people that they are not willing to repeat. But the other piece of it is the lawyers are working. 
the, uh, it's very important that we all speak to our friends and our neighbors about misinformation and help them now see how it occurs, where it is occurring. It is important that we stand up for the integrity of poll workers and people who are working on election day. Mm. And, um, and that we also, and this is critically important, that we ask people to be alert about mis and disinformation, and we ask them, do not be afraid to vote. Because I think there is also something quite insidious about these attacks um, on the electorate in these various forms that are intended to convince people that their vote won't matter. And in that way, there's a little bit of reverse psychology going on here, and let's, let's just make sure nobody falls for it. Your vote does matter, and we cannot let anyone ever take our power from us. We can never let anybody silence us. <laughs> and when we get those votes out, Starting soon, early voting is already going to start this week, I think, um, through November 5th. And let's make sure everyone votes. And we are going to have a good election day. We're going to fight for the integrity of the people's voice and for our democracy. And, you know, I'll just mention earlier, um, a couple of folks talked about what this means in terms of the world. You know, as, as vice president, I have, I've met over 150 world leaders. Presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And the thing about representing the United States of the America is when we walk in those rooms around the world, we have historically and traditionally been able to walk in those rooms, chin up, shoulders back, with the self-appointed and earned authority to talk about the importance of democracies. People around